All right, guys, so with the halving right around the corner, I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at exactly where Bitcoin currently sits after the notable fluctuations and volatility going on in its price, as well as the rest of the crypto market's price uh, throughout not only April, but most of March, uh, ever since the all-time high happened almost a month ago now. And we can look at the screener here to give us an idea of just how much people are talking about Bitcoin, which is actually surprisingly not as much over the past 30 days as the previous month. I would chalk this up to all, <laughs> all of the euphoria and hype around the all-time high that was happening in early March leading up to the inevitable all-time high just under a month ago. Also, I believe that uh, there's a lot of uncertainty right now because of the volatility. If we look at the actual price action, of Bitcoin over the past 30 days, it's surprising to see that Bitcoin's down just a tiny bit. Obviously, that has to do with the all-time highs timing just under 30 days ago. So the price is down 2.5%, not really a notable movement in either direction, but uh, it, it seems to be fluctuating day by day, anywhere between 70, 67K up to maybe 71K. It's crept up to 72K once since the all-time high, but it's kind of in this range as the bulls and bears really play tug of war with uh, the prices and which direction it's going to go next. Sentiment has been all over the place. We'll look at that in a moment, but I just wanted to give some context here. Most assets are actually down. We're not just looking at Bitcoin here. We're looking at the overall markets and see, yeah, there are plenty of exceptions. Toncoin has more than doubled. Core has more than tripled. Uh, with the the most notable meme coin of 2024 so far in terms of market cap growth, it's up 76% uh, in the past 30 days. So yeah, there's some exceptions, but for the most part, markets are a little bit down and it's a concern for traders. And I think the paralysis that traders often get during these ranging periods are notable and the lesser social volume going on here. Next, I wanted to just look at the overall price action. As I mentioned, right around the 12th or 13th, depending on your time zone, this is when the all-time high happened, uh, getting a little bit above 73K, depending on the exchange. Uh, I don't want to give the precise amount. Our, our price looks to be 73,492, uh, but yes, this could have ranged significantly depending on where you were looking. Regardless, you saw that there was this big retrace afterwards. A lot of FUD, of course, occurred at that time. We saw a rebound, another big retrace, another rebound here on April 7th, just a few days ago, a mini retrace, and then a quick recovery. Now let's talk about this quick recovery because it happened in line with the <coughs> CPI report coming out here in the US, indicating an inflation rate of 3.5% in March, which was much higher, not much, but notably higher than what was expected. And this caused equities markets to go down. Uh, I'll show that in just a moment. I also wanted to point out that the RSI is right around average right now, not extremely high or extremely low on a scale of zero to 100. It sits at 53.79. So pretty much what you would expect when prices have been doing this pattern for the past 30 days. Now, looking at the comparison, of Bitcoin versus the S&P and even gold, look at this big divergence that just happened today. The CPI report came out, equities got rocked as a result of some fear going on due to inflation being higher than experts were anticipating. But after an initial drop by Bitcoin, which was actually right before the announcement, this was people kind of anticipating that bad news might happen. The bad news was confirmed, but it quickly rebounded and went right back above 70K to where it is now at about 70.6K. The S&P is back down to where it was a week ago or so. So this is one of the rare times where we're seeing a serious divergence. We kind of saw something similar in the opposite direction back in late March where Bitcoin dropped and the S&P stayed level uh, during that time. Uh, Lots of reasons for these divergences, but <clears throat> pretty much for the last two years, we've seen a pretty tight correlation between crypto and equities. So this is very applicable. If we continue to see crypto rise, <clears throat> specifically Bitcoin, 
going into the halving over the next week and a half, while the equities markets struggle to, to keep traction after the bad news about inflation, this could be a sign that crypto is diverging away from equities again and carving their own path. And in most extended bull runs throughout the history of crypto for 15 plus years, we have seen that they most often occur when there is little to no correlation with the S&P. doesn't have to be opposite like this, but if they kind of are moving in their own ways, good sign that we can continue forward, hit those 80K, 90K, 100K levels that many of the bulls out there are uh, mentioning often. Also, I wanted to mention the whales and sharks. So this is an important one to keep an eye on uh, to anticipate where prices are going to go next. And actually, the latest trend is a little bit of dumping going on. Not significant, but it's enough to be a little concerned that those top key stakeholders that everyone's expecting to be continuing to accumulate up a storm going into the halving, they're not doing quite that. They're not dumping significantly either, but it appears that the accumulation kind of topped out a week ago from the day of this recording on April 3rd. There could be a rebound in the next couple of days, who knows? But I would anticipate that they're waiting for a few more shakeouts, perhaps another drop down to 65 to 68K level. I don't want to arbitrarily throw out numbers, but it, as of right now, if we just look at the past six days, the uh, Bitcoin holders that have between 10 to 10K BTC, they've dropped about 0.2% of the overall supply and 34.2K BTC overall. That's several billions of dollars. I won't do the math right now, but it's a lot. Um, overall, if we go back to, say, February 4th, just over two months ago, they're still up a ton and they've accumulated 182,000 490 Bitcoin or so. So yeah, the long-term trend is still fine. Just note that as we get really near the halving, they seem to be moving down a little bit. And I'd like to see them, you know, in the next few days, start to turn that around and potentially exceed the 13.2 million that they were holding on April 3rd. Besides that, keep an eye on the supply and exchanges for Bitcoin, which is staying down. Don't pay too much attention to the actual numbers here in the top left that I'm showing. Uh, there's some inaccuracies there, but I will say that the direction of the supply on exchanges is more or less reliable. And you can use that to understand that uh, there might be occurrences for Bitcoin to go back to exchanges, but now is not one of those times. So there isn't a major concern that there is a big sell-off planned by a, a large group of Holders. There could still be some anomalies and one big whale that just decides to offload a bunch of stuff in an instant. But this metric isn't pointing to that being more probable than usual. Uh, social dominance, pretty normal right now. Uh, it it kind of looks like it's just been fluctuating. Uh, right now, there is a little more talk about Bitcoin, but you can see that it's more or less just a little above the normal rate of 20%, which is what this zero axis line is marked on. I'll have this entire chart shared in the description of this video, by the way, so you can see all the same ones that I'm looking at uh, using this template and uh, save it, bookmark it, use your Sandbase Pro membership to see the real time fluctuations for all of these metrics. Uh, also, I wanna mention the funding rate, which is come back down to earth. That's a really good thing. You can see right after this big long spike here, indicating there were a lot more people betting on Bitcoin going up using their margined and leveraged uh, positions, they got liquidated during this big drop. And then you saw this big flat funding rate indicating there wasn't that same level of greed. Markets quickly recovered. Then we saw the greed return right here and boom, we see a drop once again. Very predictable. It's certainly not a perfect science, but you tend to want to avoid markets when you see a lot of these or these here. Um, and ideally, we could actually see some fear pop up. Maybe there's another drop that would cause it. Uh, but if you see an opportunity, uh, not just in the price level you want, but in the crowd's perception of the drop, where they're showing fear and actually betting against the price of Bitcoin, that's an ideal time to jump in. 
Uh, and last thing I wanted to show here is the total amount of holders, which has started to go back up again. Ideally, we actually like to see the number of wallets with more than zero Bitcoin dropping uh, because that's typically a sign that the smallest wallets out there, the only ones that can really affect this line because whale wallets are a fraction of the amount of wallets being shown on this 52.7 million wallet chart here that this is displaying. But when small wallets drop off and liquidate themselves because they're taking profit like they did here, or for whatever reason, they're just capitulating, uh, that is that tends to be when markets move up. Again, not a perfect science. I, in fact, probably like the funding rate uh, correlation with Bitcoin's price a lot more than this one. But it, on a long-term basis, you want to see the amount of holders going down as the coins kind of merge over to the sharks and whales uh, slowly and steadily, or sometimes rapidly. But as of now, over the past nine full days or so, or, or sorry, not nine, five full days or so, we've seen 195,670 new net wallets come back, uh, indicating there's a lot of anticipation for a positive outcome in the having. We don't want to see crowd anticipation for the having. We want to see the crowd writing it off and not believing that it's going to have any impact on price or might even have a negative impact. Um, and that brings us to our last point. Uh, I mentioned the CPI. Uh, it's number one, and, and inflation is number three on the top 10 trending words right now. Um, I could open them on the social context page here, put uh, inflation right next to it. And you can see just what a mammoth spike these two topics have had uh, in terms of discussion, easily the highest of the year. You can see a huge amount of discussion across all platforms, as you would expect, uh, especially when there's a, a negative CPI report coming out. Um, and it's worth noting, you know, if I zoom in here, the bounce happened precisely as the crowd started to get scared because prices dropped. Everyone said, oh, my God, why is Bitcoin pricing? Oh, it's because of the CPI report. I better get out now while I can. And then, boom, they get out while they can. Prices rebound fast. So, yeah, the sentiment, this is clearly a fear-driven topic, CPI and inflation, especially when it's correlated with a scary uh, result for the CPI report. Higher inflation than expected, FUD comes out and prices rebound. So now that the price has moved the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation, the crowd is no longer showing a crazy amount of fear related to this topic. Um, and overall, you know, if I just typed in something like buy or buying versus sell or selling, so we can take a look at a few permanent topics that are always going to convey bullishness versus bearishness. Yeah, we see the buying level is pretty normal. The sell level actually got a little higher. I could change it to shared access so it's a little more accurate. <clears throat> but compared to normal, it doesn't look like there's much going on here at all. Maybe a very tiny blip in sell discussions right around here, but I wouldn't put too much into this. I, I think the crowd sentiment overall is going to stay pretty neutral until the next big fluctuation, whether we see a test of the last month's all-time high in the next few days leading up to the halving or a test of 67K again. That's when you'll start to see buy calls and sell calls start to diverge from each other once again, and you can see how much the crowd is overreacting one way or another. But that's a wrap for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Links of all of these are in the description, and I will talk to you next time.